Hi, my name's Helen Mort. I am a poet, fiction writer, and I also dabble in creative non-fiction. Dabble makes it sound really professional. Um, and I mostly write about Sheffield and the Peak District and the landscapes that I love. Uh, I'm going to read a few new poems to you. The first one was inspired by my recent maternity leave and um, the books that I was reading to my baby, which have really repetitive refrains, and which I started to find a bit sinister after a while. It's called Push the Button, Hear the Sound. Listen to the lorikeet's whistling song. Can you hear the call of the minor bird? Can you hear the flamingos in the water? Can you hear your small heart next to mine and the house breathing as it holds us? Can you hear the chainsaw start, the bones of our neighbour's eucalyptus breaking? It's summer, high, emptied. Listen to the ground giddy with thirst. Listen to the dog shit on the lawns, the murderous water boatman skimming the green pond. Can you hear the roses rioting on the trellis? Can you make a noise like a cheeky monkey? There are sounds your book lacks names for. Can you hear the sleepless girls in Attercliff? Can you hear the aspirin of the sun dissolving? Listen to the casual racists in the family pub. Listen to the house shiraz I drink as if it's something's blood. Listen to my fear blooming in the vase of my chest and listen to how I water it. Can you hear your grandfather's lost childhood? Can you hear the suburban library shutting, the door closing, the books still breathing? Or can you hear the budget tightening? It's almost dark. Listen to the noisy penguins on the ice. Listen to my late night online purchases. Orange lipstick, high-waisted bikini briefs, types of plants that will never die. Listen to your half-sister hissing to her friends at 2am. You hang up. No, you hang up. Listen to the panic in their emojis. Can you hear your father lighting his first cigarette? Can you hear the foxes mating all the way to oblivion? Their sounds are inhuman, too human, scaling the high fences, pressing our window panes. Listen to the utter indifference of the stars. The night is full of holes and we grate our bodies against them. Can you hear that, Alfie? Can you hear me holding you closer than my life? Listen to the trout by Schubert. Listen to the blackbird's chirpy song. Listen to this waltz by Paganini. Listen to the stage as we walk clean off the front of it, into the audience, the pit, the silent orchestra. Um, because I live in Sheffield, I write quite a lot about rain. You've got to work with the material you've got. And um, this is a poem about being out early in the morning and being kind of captured by rain, I guess. It's called Rain Twice and it's in two parts. One, rain in a head torch. Drifts sideways through the beam, slicks across a lemon moon and makes the woods a mystery of dog scent, winter mulch. Pre-dawn, when Sharrow Vale and Salter Lane lie down to weep, Proud as a grandmother, and not your grandmother, but mine. Tears that never fall, caught by the landscape of her face. Tears a lifted hand could wipe away. And so I raise mine to the silver trees, and pause and look and run again, until I run like horizontal rain, run with just my failing light and this false gravity. Two, night rain. Rain tiptoeing on the roof of your van, then quickening. The way you say I enter a room, deer-like, tentative, then definite. I can't stand outside my body, see myself a shadow animal against the wall. But I take your word for it, lie still on your chest and find you too beautiful to look straight at. So I look at you the way rain touches the roof a thousand times lightly, trace your shoulder the way drops move down the window pane. And when you turn to me, the rain falls through the night's thin skin and my skin is less than paper. So by now I must be drowned, must be an envelope soaked in warm water, held to the light so you can see right through me how I break and make the world seem solid. 
Um, and the last poem that I'm going to read, I've never read it from my computer before. <laughs> it's really strange. Uh, is is called Bear. I got kind of obsessed with grizzly bears uh, after a visit to Canada. And I was trying to kind of use the metaphor of turning into an animal um, as a way of talking about postnatal depression. And it's in several parts and it's called Bear. From the day you came out of me, you were bare, musky and solid, shambling through your own world. I looked into the dens of your eyes. You opened the cave of your mouth and I knew I could not call you mine. But I was made to guard you, lumber with you, forest shy in my new fur, my loose thin skin. At night, I turn into a mother grizzly. My hands cudgels, my voice dredged from my chest. I suckle you and suckle you and you whimper for more. Before the dawn, we will forage right up to the boundary of the human, lit with homesteads and cattle farms. I will shield you from dogs and sawn off shotguns, from fear so tangible it becomes a bullet, a scythe. I'll hide you inside my skull if I have to. We'll eat what we can, Picking the day's carcass clean, licking the bare ribs of mountains. Darling, next spring when snow is memory, I will be your wife again. But in winter I've married a grizzly whose shadow dwarfs mine. All day I dig wide circles, smell of his winter fur. I pull up roots and our cub eats them, greedy, pouring the earth. At night I am surrounded, crushed by my love's warm bones. When he opens his mouth, he could swallow me. Darling, do not tend the garden or ask me to come out in the sun where cats prowl suburban flower beds. Don't show me the trellis and the pond. I vowed to live in the dark, dive into the undergrowth when I see you, to show the pelt of myself only to the bitter moon, dance on my hind legs for no one. When they found the bear child of Lithuania, he walked on all fours, made low sounds that were barely human. A ten-year-old, speechless, rumbling with his own language and no memory but leaves under his padding hands, meat and the sour tang of berries. When this is over and the summer coaxes me out, will I still speak guttural bear? For months my voice has been granite, snowmelt, the place where rivers argue with rock. When I wince into the light, will it warm or blind me? Teddy, your first word, Ted, Ted, Ted. And I stare with disbelief at the stuffed tan animal you dangle by the leg or clutch to your chest, inhaling your own heavy scent. You carry your bears everywhere, flatten them with love. My old bearskin is hanging in the wardrobe, moth-touched, hunched with wear, moulded to my absent shape. One day I might drag it out, bury my head in the blood and apples smell of it. For now, we sit tame on the sofa, your small hand in mine, your teddy next to us, the room held miniature in his glassy eyes. Thanks for listening. I hope you liked some of those or even all of those poems. Um, I, yeah, I'm going to stop now. See you later. Mm -hmm.